Hi guys. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to make a loft. A little history behind lofts. It came from the industry of boat making. So a loftsman, back when they were making ships and hulls, what they typically would do is hang string and create curvature. And then they would outline that with wood, creating a loft shape. And that came from the boat industry. Now back to Rhino, if we wanted to create our own loft, what we would do typically is double click and go to a front view. And now if we take our control point curve tool, I'll start making some kind of funky shapes. Let's do about four of them. No particular direction. higher and one more let's do the lowest one all right I'll go back to our perspective let's take these shapes and spread them out no particular distance there we go now each one of these curves has some properties to them that can connect to the next one and over. So if we select all these curves, type in loft, L-O-F-T, it'll start to give us a surface that connects all of these. And a little dialog box comes up here for loft options. We can go through the different options now. Normal is where each one of these control points is connected perfectly with, no, with zero tolerance to the next one. A loose fitting one is a slightly given tolerance between curve to curve. A tight one is a perfectly fit one again. A straight sections one, we hit preview, creates a 2D degree to each curve to curve. So we end up with some, kind of some flat points within here. You can see how the curvature is not interpolated in between curves. It's more of a point. This can be helpful for panelizing or rationalizing geometry. The next one is developable. So if you were to make this out of paper, in which this one you cannot, it could be unrolled very easily and uniform which, again, is more or less a loose loft. All right, let's just go back to normal. Now, we have all these other options. For instance, a line curve. So these little white guidelines pop up with points on each end of each curve. This is telling us the ordering system in between curves. Now, if we were to click on one of the points, it's going to arrange this point to this point creating a flip in our surface. And overlapping surfaces aren't necessarily good. So we like to keep these all in order with lofts. If we right click again, we can go to rebuild with 10 points and we can adjust this number. So let's just type in three to see the variations we get. See how smooth this is since there's only three points of freedom. Now let's try to get it really tight, 25. We get some more of these, what they call ISO curves, in between every surface. Let's do it even more with 150. Even more. So the tolerance from curve to curve is practically nothing now. Now, if we do that again, let's just undo and hit loft once more, or L O F T, with 150 control points, let's try straight sections. Again, so these end up being points and straight. And we can still grab the ISO curves. So now if we select the surface, let's compare straight sections to normal. What we end up with is, if we move this over, create another loft. Let's do normal. So if we try to explode this one, we'll see up here, cannot explode single surface. This is one singular manipulated surface. 
Now if we do straight sections, explode, we have three. And that is due to straight sections ending at each control curve. And those are the basics of loft.